I'm Deborah Ann Tannen, Jefferson Patterson Park and Museum. I'm an educator there. You can probably tell that I'm at home today. I'm not at the park. As you sit and watch me on your computer today, I want you to think about this. What did people do to occupy themselves before there were computers, before there were phones, before there was even electricity? Well, we're going to find out today, and we're going to start by learning how to play a really popular game called Nine Men's Guess. All right, so here is Nine Men's Morris playing board. Here's exactly what it looks like. There's a PDF of this on our website, so you can print it out for yourself, or you can draw it yourself, whatever you want. Now, each player gets nine pieces. Nine dark pieces and nine white pieces, so they're easy to tell apart. So before I actually tell you the rules and all the rest of it, I want to give you a little bit of history about the game itself. So this game, or variations of it, have been played for hundreds, even possibly thousands of years. We know that the Vikings played it. We found boards scratched into a timber from a Viking ship burial in Sweden, and it was popular throughout the Scandinavian countries. Um, a board was also found scratched into choir stalls in medieval cathedrals in Europe, and it was one of the most popular games throughout the British Isles. So when the colonists came to the New World, they brought the game with them, and it became popular in taverns, where it was played by adults, but it was also played at home with adults and with kids. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the object of the game is to capture all but two of your opponent's pieces. The other way you can win is to block your opponent so they can't move any pieces in any direction. Um, the game actually has two stages. The first stage is where you are placing your nine pieces on the board and you take turns with that. And then the second stage is once you've got your pieces on the board, then you can move them around following these lines, all right? So you have to put your pieces on the dots, but yeah, you can follow anywhere where there's a line that connects, you can move your piece, which means you can't move it diagonally because there are no lines that connect those. The light colored pieces get to start. So Andy, why don't you go ahead and start? And you see we're placing our pieces on these middle um, dots because they're the most valuable because you can move your piece different directions. I'm going to put my piece here because one of the important parts of this game is you're trying to get three in a row, just like tic-tac-toe. If he were to get, if Andy were to get three in a row, he would get to take one of my pieces permanently off the board. He would capture it. So I wanted to block him from doing that. So once again, I wanted to block him from getting three in a row. I'm sort of playing catch up here because I'm always trying to block him instead of being able to create my own strategy. So once again, I'm in a spot where I need to block him, but I have all my pieces so I can still do that. Now, I got a break. So I have three in a row. It's called a mill. And I get to take any one of Andy's pieces off the board. And I'm going to take this one off the board. So that's out of play permanently. So 
So I want to block him. I'm putting my last piece on the board, right? Now starts the part where we're going to move our pieces around along these lines, trying to block in our opponent or to create mills so we can capture their pieces. again. I'm not going to be able to prevent that. So I'm just going to make that sad move. All right. He is a nine. All right. Okay. So Andy wins. I've only got two pieces on the board. So good job. The only way to get good at nine men's Morris is to play it and play it a lot. And I want to say thanks to Andy, who played about a million times with me so that I could practice this. But anyway, it's really simple to make the game board. It's really simple to make the pieces. Um, on our website, we've got a PDF for the game board, and we've got directions there, too. Also, you could actually just draw the board yourself on a piece of paper. You could actually... Um, also draw it with chalk on the sidewalk. That would be a lot of fun. You could play outside. So another thing you can do with it is you could put it on a piece of cloth. Like this is actually a checkerboard, but you could put the Nine Men's Morris board on here, and which was really a common thing to do in colonial times. So then you can just like roll it up and take it wherever you go. All you need are 18 pieces. You need nine pieces that are dark and nine pieces that are light. Um, I ended up using buttons. Um, I started out trying to make salt dough pieces like these here, but I made them way too big and they wouldn't fit on my board. But you could do that too. So you could use different colored pieces from other games. Really, um, the sky is the limit. I hope you give this a try. It's an awful lot of fun. I've really learned a lot, a lot of strategy and had fun myself. Thanks again for joining me and hope to see you again.